Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. Okay, um, so uh, so now uh, let's continue with uh, chapter 5, part 2. Okay, so this is the continuation from the previous video. Uh, so the previous video is chapter 5 part 1 so we have covered up until the collected characteristic curves okay so in this chapter 5 part 2 we will cover on the cutoff region saturation region active region and also the dc load line okay so uh without wasting time let's uh, directly go into the active region so if you still remember in the previous video lecture, okay, remember the uh, transistor characteristics. So for the transistor, basically you have, uh, if you plot the VI uh, graph, you will have something like this. You will have something like this. So this is 0 0.7 volt. This is IC. This is VCE. Okay. So the this region over here is what we call as the saturation region. This one is the active region okay you can see that this is quite linear and this one is the breakdown region breakdown region or the cutoff region okay so this slide over here actually explain this part the active region so the most important region is the active region, okay? So what is active region? The, the, is, it is the region in which the transistor have many applications, okay? So usually um, the transistor in uh, many applications, the transistor actually works in the active region and in the active region, it acts better as an amplifier. So the active region, we also call it as the linear region. Okay, so the transistor operates in active region when the emitter junction is forward bias and the collector junction is reverse bias. Okay, this is important. The transistor operates in active region when the emitter junction is forward bias and the collector junction is reverse bias. Okay. So uh, this is the emitter, this is the collector, okay? So in the active state, collector current is beta times the IB. So I think we, you already seen this uh, formula before. Okay, so I have introduced this formula in the part one, where IC is equals to beta DC IB, okay? So what happens in the active uh, region, the active operation? So this is an NPN transistor. Okay, this is the connection NPN transistor. So you can see that this is the current flow, the current flow like this. Okay, IC goes up to the uh, IE. Okay, and over here we have IB. So the current is generated in the emitter and base region when VBE bigger than sigma B. So the base region is very lightly doped. The base region is this one. Okay, The base region is lightly doped. Its resistance is greater than the resistance of the reverse bias collector base junction. A vast majority of the emitter current continues through the reverse bias 
collector base junction to the collector circuit. And the collector base junction is designed to allow reverse current without damaging the junction. Okay. So remember the VBE over here is 0 0.7. We, we consider as 0 0.7 in the active region. Next, let's look at the saturation region. So saturation region is the region from 0 until 0 0.7 volt. That one is saturation region. So saturation region is the region, region in which the transistor tends to behave like a closed switch. Okay, so remember, uh, previously you have a transistor like this. This is C, B, and E. So this is in uh, active region. Okay. But in saturation region, the transistor tends to behave as a closed switch. That's why in saturation region, the transistor will become something like this. It will become a closed switch. So closed switch meaning that this uh, C collector and emitter is shorted and IC is basically equals to IE when the collector and emitter are shorted. Okay, so already explained here. And IC and IE are maximum in this mode. So the transistor operates in saturation region when both the emitter and collector junctions are forward bias. And the transistor tends to behave as a closed switch where IC is equals to IE. Okay, so this is saturation region. So when BE junction when the BE junction becomes forward bias and IB is increased, the BE junction is over here. This is emitter. This is base. So when the BE junction becomes forward bias and IB is increased, the collector current also increase and VCE will decrease because more drop across the collector resistor. So when it reaches the saturation value, or we name it as VCE saturation, as ATE saturation, the BC junction will become forward bias and IC increase no further even IB is increased. So the, in saturation region, this formula is no longer valid. Okay, So if the transistor is operating in saturation region, you cannot use this formula. You only can use this formula when it is operating in the active region. Okay, and the IC saturation can be calculated using this formula. VCC equals to, uh, IC saturation equals to VCC divided by RC. Okay, so the IC is current that flows here. So basically you can find the current here, the VCC voltage divided by the resistor and you will get the IC in saturation region. So VCE for the transistor is shown to be approximately 0 0.3. So this is typical for a tra saturated transistor. So with the 0 0.7 value for the VBE, the collector base junction is based to the difference between the two which is 0 0.4 volt. Take note that this voltage indicates that the collector base junction of the transistor is forward bias even though it's not fully. So in as a summary, what you should know is that when the BE junction is forward, bias, it will become ideal switch equivalent. 
but if the PC junction is forward bias for saturation, it is closed switch. Okay. So this is the difference. Okay. When the BE junction is forward bias, it is ideal switch equivalent. But if the BC junction is forward bias for saturation, it closed switch. It will become like this. So during saturation state, collector current has reached a maximum and is independent of the base current. So the cutoff region or the breakdown region. Okay, cutoff region or the breakdown region is uh, the region at the end of the VI graph or transistor. So cutoff region is the region in which the transistor tends to behave as an open switch. Okay, different from the saturation. For saturation region, the transistor tends to behave as a closed switch. But for a cutoff region, the transistor behaves as an open switch. Okay, so when the transistor became an open switch, you will have a circuit like this. Okay, open. So collector and base being open. So when you have an open circuit like this, you can directly know that no current can flow. So IC is equals to zero, IB is equals to zero, and IE equals to zero. So the transistor operates in cutoff region when both the emitter and collector junction are reverse bias. And this IC is equals to IB is equals to IE equals to zero ampere. Okay, so this is the cutoff region. So when IB is equals to zero, the transistor is in the cutoff region. And just as the name implies, there is practically no current flow in the collector. Okay, remember, for cutoff region, there will be no current flow. So with the transistor in a cutoff state, the full VCC can be measured across the collector and emitter VCE. So this one, VCE here, is approximately equals to VCC. Okay, because the current is all zero. Okay, so you can approximate that VCE here is equals to VCC. So in the cutoff region, both transistor junctions are reverse bias. Okay, so if both uh, transistor junctions are reverse bias, then it's in cutoff region. The depletion layers extend well into the emitter, base and collector regions, and only an extremely small amount of reverse current passes from the emitter to the collector, and the transistor is said to be cut off. Okay, so that is the difference between uh, active region, saturation region, and also the cutoff region of a PJT transistor. So BE junction reverse bias is uh, ideal switch equivalent, but if the BC junction is reverse bias, then uh, for cutoff, it is open switch. For saturation, it is closed switch. So during cutoff state, transistor is not conduct. Take note that during cutoff state, transistor is not conduct. Next is the DC load line. DC load line, okay. Remember, this is the uh, VI graph. This is IC plotted against VCE. Okay, the, this, the line, the pink line here is what we call as the DC load line. Okay, the DC load line graphically can be illustrated in relation to the cutoff and saturation of collector characteristic curve. Okay, you basically can draw this DC load line based on the cutoff and also the saturation of the collector characteristics curve. So the bottom of the load line is an ideal cutoff where IB is equals to zero and IC is equals to zero. 
and VCE is equal to VCC. While the top of the load line is at saturation, where IC saturation is equals to IC and VCE equals to VCE saturation. So it is drawn by connecting the saturation point, this one, with the cutoff points. Okay, so if you draw this line, you will get the DC load line. Okay, so DC load line, you can draw based on the saturation and also the cutoff of the collector characteristics curve. So when you already draw the DC load line, you can actually determine the DC operating point. So what is DC operating point? It is a point on the output characteristic curve of the transistor that corresponds to a specific I in, I out, and also V not, V out. Okay, look at here. This is your collector characteristic, IC, uh, plotted against VCE. And then you find the saturation and also the cutoff. So you can draw the line. So you have the DC load line. DC operating point is the point on the output characteristic curve of the transistor that corresponds to the specific I in, I not, and also V not. Okay, so the DC operating point between saturation and cutoff is we call as the Q point. Okay, this is the DC operating point. Okay, or we call it as the Q point. The goal is to set the Q point such that it does not go into saturation or cutoff when AC signal is applied. And the Q point defines the region that will be employed for amplification of the applied signal. So over here you have three Q point based on different uh, three different base current. So over here you have Q point one, Q two, and also Q point three. Okay, so this is the DC operating point. Okay, so basically that's the end for uh, chapter 5 part 2. Okay, I, it's just a short uh, video, but actually you can combine with part 1. Okay, uh, I don't want to combine this uh, video lecture with part 3. Yeah. So the part three, there will be another video lecture. Okay, that I will be uh, upload. That I will upload in week twelve in the Yulin. Okay, so for part chapter five, part three, uh, video lecture, please refer to week twelve. Okay, so for week 11, we will we cover it for the part 1 and also part 2. Okay, so this is the end for part 2 up until the DC operating point. So you should already know what is the difference between saturation region, active region and also cutoff region. How to draw the DC load line, how to determine the DC operating point. So that is basically what we learn in chapter 5 part 2 okay so we end this video lecture and we will continue in the chapter 5 part 3 for the common emitter and also common base circuit okay so thank you